Welcome to the CFA Level 1 presentation on accounting shenanigans on the cash flow statement. As you've seen in the previous lecture, accounting, accrual accounting is easily manipulated because of many estimates and judgments involved. So companies make uh, estimates and judgments about say depreciation life of an asset which impacts the depreciation expense every year which will impact net income so i won't go over details but just as a quick refresher from last time there are several estimates and judgments which impact the income that a company reports in a given period because of this issue several analysts focus on cash flows because cash flows are clearly harder to manipulate than net income there are fewer estimates and judgments involved nevertheless some firms still try to manipulate cash flow from operations now how can this happen clearly uh, we are not we are assuming here that companies are not uh, that companies are not being explicitly dishonest and they are reporting correctly reporting the amount of cash that they have and obviously the how much cash a company has is is not subjective you just look at the bank accounts and you can see how the amount of cash is changing but the way companies try to manipulate is by trying to present a growing or sustainable cash flow from operations if you recall the cash flow of a company has three components cash flow from operations cash flow from financing and cash flow from investing activity and the one that concerns while all three are important the component that concerns analysts the most is cfo because analysts want to know how much cash is being generated by the core business by the operations of the company and analysts want to know whether the cfo is sustainable is it growing and so on hence a company that wants to manipulate focuses its energy on trying to boost cfo now how can it do this it can do this broadly speaking in two ways one is by misclassifying cash flow so a cash flow that should really be a negative cash flow in cfo is sometimes categorized as a financing activity or a investing activity that makes cfo look better another technique is the timing of cash flow so if in say q4 2010 a company wants to show high cfo then some cash flows that should really be occurring or should be shown in this quarter are pushed out to next quarter in order to boost the cash flow numbers for this quarter so broadly speaking these are the two categories in terms of this cfa reading the learning objective statements require you to understand these four techniques for manipulating the cash flow statement number 1 stretching accounts payable number 2 financing accounts payable 3 securitization or securitizing of receivables and 4 using stock buyback to offset dilution of earnings in the subsequent slides we will talk about these possible techniques and if you understand the basics of these techniques you have this reading covered So number 1 was stretching of payables. What does this mean? Essentially this means simply delaying the payment to suppliers. So as I just alluded to, let's say that in Q4 2010 you need to make certain payments to your suppliers. If you make those payments that is going to reduce your CFO. and what you then try to do or what you do is rather than make your payments to the suppliers in this quarter you push out the payment to q1 2011 and then your cfo for 2010 looks a little bit better because the negative cash flow money out to supplier is not happening in this in this quarter and essentially what you have managed to do is give a one off boost to the cfo the cash flow from operations in this quarter now there are two views on this one as an analyst if you see a company doing this you might think that the company is struggling why because it can't make its payments so it is trying to push payments out 
another possible view is that this is prudent cash flow management where a company is holding on to cash for as long as possible and earning a return on that cash now which of these scenarios is true for the company you are analyzing obviously requires more detail and at this stage we don't need to get into that detail all you need to know is that that just because uh, money is being paid later isn't necessarily a bad thing what are the issues with this technique clearly it's not sustainable because once you've pushed your payments out then you can't just keep pushing these payments out the second is suppliers might tighten their credit terms so in the long term you might be doing yourself more harm than good because uh, possibly then suppliers will just say okay we will only sell to you if you pay us immediately now how can you as an analyst tell whether a company is stretching payables and the answer is you should look at what's happening to the days of sales payable and this is a quick refresher something that you should know quite well by now but your formula for uh, days of sales payable is 365 divided by your cogs over accounts payable and this is a measure of how many days it is taking you to make your payments and if this number is going up that means that the company that you are studying is stretching out its payables a slightly more sophisticated form of manipulating cfo is through the financing of payables the fundamental idea here is that a firm borrows which is essentially a financing transaction to pay off accounts payable which is a operating expense let's look at how this works so again let's say that you have company xyz and let's say that this company has a uh, accounts payable of 2 million and we are in q4 2010 and company xyz wants to boost its cfo now under normal circumstances it should pay off its 2 million dollars to the supplier which will reduce cfo but instead what this company might do is it might reach out to its bank and ask the bank to pay 2 million dollars to the supplier so the supplier in this example is insisting that it needs to receive its payment in this quarter the supplier does get its 2 million through the bank so the supplier is happy but what xyz has done is it has now reclassified its accounts payable as say a note payable so this note payable is now to the bank and let's say that in the subsequent quarter xyz then pays off this 2 million dollars to the bank and that will reduce the cash flow from financing the beauty of all this is that cash flow from operations is not impacted so it seems like cash flow from operations is higher than what it should be we can say here that because of these transactions the cfo will be overstated a smart analyst needs to be able to pick up what's going on because this notes payable should really be classified as a operating expense but as you can see here there are ways to manipulate cfo and this obviously is one example these bullet points here simply illustrate what i've been talking about so again as a quick recap essentially what the company is doing is it's borrowing from the bank in order to pay off accounts payable the bank is asked to pay the supplier the company reclassifies accounts payable as notes payable and later on when the company pays off the notes payable that reduces the cff and essentially then cfo remains artificially high next we'll talk about securitization of accounts receivable effectively what happens here is that a company packages its receivables and sells or transfers these receivables to a financial institution or a variable interest entity vie just as a word of caution 
Schweser refers to this as a special purpose entity which is an older name we will simply go with VIE and I think what Schweser does is they cut paste from older versions and obviously this is something that just came through if you look at the curriculum they refer to this entity as variable interest entity this is explained in more detail in level 2 I am going to just in a little bit I'll just talk about this very briefly but first let's understand what's going on here so let's say again you are studying company XYZ and now this company has several receivables so AR1, AR2 etc etc so these are receivables from customers now one way of boosting CFO is to package these receivables and essentially sell these receivables or transfer these receivables to a VIE or variable interest entity now when XYZ does this obviously it will receive some money from VIE and if XYZ is, sh is showing this as a sale let's say it gets 10 million dollars from here then effectively what is happening is the company is boosting its sales and essentially boosting its CFO by 10 million this is how the 10 million might be shown in accounting transactions and it might seem that CFO is higher but the what effectively is happening here is collateralized borrowing so effectively what might be happening is the company XYZ is really borrowing 10 million dollars with the accounts receivable as collateral so here again this is called a manipulation because the CFO if this money is shown as sales and it is adding to CFO then because of this CFO is being is, is shown higher than what it should be what's happening on the accounting side essentially these bullet points just highlight what I've talked about so for company XYZ there is a reduction in receivables because they are being transferred to the variable uh, interest entity the CFO increases because our sales number goes up and sales are obviously part of CFO and essentially we have boosted then our cash flow by securitizing receivables and this boosting of uh, cash flow by securitizing receivables is not a sustainable activity so companies can't just keep selling their receivables a quick note on this variable interest entity these are generally considered bankruptcy remote which means that if XYZ declares bankruptcy then the assets that are under the variable interest entity which would be the accounts receivable still belong to VIE and the people who uh, typically these VIE this VIE will have issued uh, securities against this receivable as collateral and those uh, receivables would still be considered valid under VIE and the obligations to uh, to these security holders still hold whether you got that or not is not such a big deal the core point that you need to understand from this slide is the that securitization of receivables essentially means that a company is is selling its receivables and by selling its receivables it is artificially boosting its CFO so that's the core point on this slide this whole point about bankruptcy remote and VIE is discussed briefly in fixed income securities and then discussed in detail in level 2 next we'll talk about how the impact of uh, stock buybacks and specifically how stock buybacks are used to offset dilution first as a quick refresher you might recall that companies issue stock options to their employees as a form of compensation when employees exercise the stock option then the number of shares in the market goes up which means there is dilution and what companies then do is buy back these shares to reduce or offset the dilution so let's take a particular example let's say that to offset this dilution a company repurchased shares worth 24,000 and let's say that earlier when employees had exercised their options they gave the company $20,000 to exercise options 
so the net outflow from the company is four thousand dollars now per accounting rules this four thousand dollar is treated as a cff because it is being used to buy back shares however if you look at the reason for this cash flow it should really be classified as cfo because this 4000 really has to do with employee compensation so stock option expense should really be considered a, a operating expense because it has to do with paying employees and any form of compensation to employees should really be classified under cfo but here because of accounting reasons and because this ostensibly is a buyback of shares it's being treated as cff so as analysts we need to know that when something like this is happening we should really add back to cff and reduce this 4000 from cfo so for a company that is doing something like this cfo is overstated a related point is the impact on tax when we when a company uh, is dealing with stock options so the point is this there are tax savings on the exercise of employee options so in the example i just showed the company had a expense or a cash outflow of 4000 which is calculated simply as number of shares into the market price minus exercise price now since this is an expense obviously it is reducing the earnings before tax if it's re reducing the earnings before tax then obviously the tax is also going down by this much by amount given in this formula we really don't need to get into the details of this formula but as long as you get the general understanding that since this 4000 is being shown as a uh, expense it is reducing earnings before tax which in turn means that our tax goes down since tax is considered a cash flow from operations or tax is an operating cash flow tax going down means that your overall cash flow from operations is going up but this again boosting cfo using this mechanism is not sustainable so that is it it's a relatively short reading all you really need to know is the four methods for boosting cfo and as long as you understand those four methods you are in good shape as far as this reading is concerned as always practice hard if you have any comments post them if you like this video then click on the like button